Okay, so um, welcome to Boom Boom Boom. Welcome to my channel. This is my artistic channel, which is um, hopefully going to be the one of the best channels out there. I don't know if it is. I hope it is. But while I'm still working on this larger project that I've been slowly putting things in, and I only have the, the ability to work on it on off days and weekends, unfortunately, because I really need a lot of sunlight to do those um, in their best perspective. But disregard me slowing, not slowing, but slowly moving in that particular area. And at the exact same time during the week, I do have time to do a couple of drawings here and there. One of my habits is I like to watch the news. My wife hates that I like to watch the news. I like to watch news because um, I watched news as a kid. And as I did, I would have, you know, these little, huh, I wonder if you drew that, what would it look like? moments. So as an adult, I still have those thoughts of as the news is being fed to me, I am literally thinking how it looks visually if they don't show me a visual. And excuse me, it wasn't too long ago since I woke up and I had to go to the store and go do some car stuff. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I am not that tired. I have my coffee here. So I'm gonna, ah, I just wasted coffee on my freaking Ah! Okay, crazy moment there. So this is what I'm gonna do. I want to show you what I've worked on yesterday, which was 2-28-2020. Today, because it is a leap year, today is February 29th, 2020. Happy birthday to those people who are born, born on the 29th. This is one of those rare moments where you actually can celebrate your actual birthday. And not on March or whatever. It's a leap year. Enjoy it. I will say this here. I watch the news closely. And when I get the opportunity to do an editorial-like drawing, I do it. I ain't getting paid for it. I just do it because I like to do it. And as I do stuff like this, I actually get more experience with the apps and software that I'm using. I use Procreate the entire time to do everything that was done. Um, I processed this on, <coughs> I'm not sick, excuse me. I processed this entire thing on my iPad. So just to let you know, it is about COVID-19. Other words, um, the uh, coronavirus. So I hope you enjoy this here. But what I have to do is talk a little bit about it. And I've got to pull it up over here real quick. So, originally, because I, I need to explain what you're going to visually see. Um, you're going to visually see, give me one moment here. There it is. Let me pause this here. Originally, I was going to redraw something that I had already done before. Because I saw the stock market was selling, selling, selling like mad crazy. And I did another drawing um, in 2018, and that drawing was a guy in a blue tie. I can see it here. A guy in a blue tie, he's screaming like this, sell everything. And that was the drawing that I had done. Now, I drew that in 20, oh, April the 4th, 2018. Weird thing about that is I had my iPad back then. I could have drawn it on the iPad, but I didn't. I found it easier to just draw it by hand and get it over with. That was a little bit of stupidity on my part. Because of that, I've gotten a lot better. Now I've used, now I use more basic tools to go in there, do my drawing and build upon it. But that leads into something else. As an artist, you cannot draw everything because Unless you're Kim John G or you're Carl K, these guys have a huge library of, of images in their head, of trained knowledge in their head. You, you can't be like those guys. You could be, but remember, these guys were, were, were taught or learned to draw at a very early age, and they were encouraged 
at some point they were encouraged by other people or they encouraged themselves to continue to study while everything else was going on around them. Doing that kind of makes you not so smart in other areas because you're putting all your brain into visual stuff as opposed to mathematical and all this other BS. It's, it's one of those things where their muscle memory for drawing has expanded exponentially. Could you get that? Eh, possibly. I don't know. But one thing that is um, absolutely true about me, I don't have that reference. But I was trained to go and pick up and find references. So as I was working on my original character, I turned around and I stopped. And I was like, you know what? This is not really working out for me. So I turned around. Give me one second here. Gonna keep on moving. I turned around, found a picture of a man walking up to the New York Stock Exchange desk. Because I guess there's many desks. Inside. I've never been there before. Um, and that's the reason why I need references. But I've seen it on different movies and everything. And apparently this is a round desk. And when you walk up to it, um, you can see the sales. And you can see what, what's going on. And different companies advertise. And you can see all the NASDAQ numbers and everything. So I, I got, I found a picture of a guy that was walking up to it. And he's a husky. Well, he's not husky. He just got a big coat on. And that was perfect for me because originally I was going to go for just the virus being a blob walking up like, like a big circle. And it didn't really look right. But then I was like, wait a minute, what about a big, nasty looking green like person that's just a virus, like a, a walking virus walking around? Because COVID-19 is very, very volatile. So I started working with that, immediately isolated the guy put my character, just slapped it right on top of him. And as I slapped him on top of him, I eventually gave up. Yeah, I originally gave up on using the photo as a reference and turned around and just started working on the character itself. And that, 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 that's a really smart thing because, number one, you don't want the photo to become your drawing and you end up tracing so what I ended up doing was, and this is this is a little bit of copyright thing here. You can't steal somebody else's work. It's always a bad idea to do that. But there's nothing wrong with using someone else's work as a reference. You can reference their colors. You can reference the appearance of a building, especially if you've never been in that building before. Um, the best example, I guess I will have a story. The best example is when Marvel Comics wanted to do a special on Wolverine, it was a, a, a coming book edition of Wolverine. What they did, and this was just an absolute genius. They got the artists, put them on an airplane, sent them to Japan, and said, draw. Soak up everything you got. Take pictures, draw everything you can, just absorb it. They didn't just say, here's some photos, work with that. They sent these guys there. They, they, they were there to smell Japan, see Japan, feel Japan. They were immersed in the environment itself. Can the average everyday artist go and do that? Hell no, we can't do that. We can't. For me to go to Japan right now, it cost me like $5,000. Oh, that's money I ain't got. But if you want to give me a ticket, go on ahead and give me a ticket. I'll give you the information that you need and you give, give me a flight, you know, and a room. I want a room. I definitely want a room. Good room. Ain't got to be the best room. But if you want to send me to Japan, send me to freaking Japan. Oh, I want to be that black guy walking around. Now, after getting the reference from New York State um, Stock Exchange, I ended up suppressing that or using my layers and just getting rid of it. I'm not getting rid of it. Um, making it unseen or invisible. And then I pulled up the other um, image that I used for reference because there were a lot of um, illustrations of what the virus looked like. There were some that were cut out that you can see the inside of the virus. And there were others that were just the outside. So I got the general appearance of what the outside looked like. And I was happy with that. I was also okay with using the color green because, to me, virus, disgusting, um, infectious, seems green to me. So after that, I started giving my character, my actual character, a lot of treatment. I spent a lot of time on the character. Now, I did have a little bit of an issue because 
First issue was I had to isolate the head from the body because I knew I didn't want it to be one consistent color. And as I moved on, it was actually a smart idea because I am still learning Procreate. And one of the problems that I have sometimes is when I make a body, when I make a shape, I will screw up and I'll have like, instead of a perfect circle, there'll be like a gap somewhere. So what I do, um, when I do the drag to fill that color void in, there could be a little, little small hole that makes it fill up the entire page as opposed to that circle that I wanted. So because I didn't do the best layering effect um, originally, I had to stop, pause, take do the head separately. So I actually made the head massive in size, but I was able to isolate the head and work on just the head for a little bit and then work on the body for a while too. And that comes into play later on because another issue that I have personally is I still haven't mastered masking yet. Shame on me. I'm working on it, I'm working on it. So let's go ahead and continue um, going past this here. I end up putting in the briefcase. I end up working on the rest of the body. And remember I said I had a problem with the masking thing? Because I have issues with putting, having holes here and there because of the way I draw, because I haven't found the perfect brush just yet. And when I do, I'm going to name it Carlton's Brush. The last thing I had to do was color the entire character in. So I actually chopped him up into pieces. Um, you can see that his butt got put in there, then his leg got put in there, and then part of his back got put in there. And I started isolating a little piece here and then color, isolate color, because I knew I had a gap somewhere. I just couldn't figure out where that gap was. So it just took me a little bit of time. So I piecemeal that. I also used um, a couple of layer effects. Um, I multiplied one so I can get the briefcase to color in properly. Again, locking down those small holes that was in there. And I'm just going through this here to see what I'm what I actually did. But working on the desk by itself, I had to try to make some some good honest decisions. How much detail do you want in this particular drawing? And I decided on keeping it as simple as possible. Show some depth, not a lot, but a little bit, um, by showing that there's a few desks back there, like boom, 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 like desk, desk, desk. Um, I also took advantage of Procreate's new writing tool. I was I was very happy to use it. I'm so happy they have a writing tool in there now. And it was just trying to make it as simple as possible without going too far or too over to just make it look like the actual desk. And I put some writing in there. I ended up, um, the very first time I had done this drawing, my biggest mistake was the person at the desk who's sitting at the desk is going <gasps> like that, that guy, originally when I, when I showed this to my coworker, my coworker loved it. When I showed this to my wife, my wife was like, oh, that's funny. Cause they're at the office. Um, you know, the, my wife literally thought they were, that the virus had, was entering a hospital. Like he's got an appointment at the hospital. And I realized that the guy looked like he was wearing scrubs. Even though he had the US flag on him, it didn't look like, it didn't completely look as though it was a professional working at the stock exchange because they wear a blue coat to identify themselves, but they still have a shirt and tie on. And that's what I was missing. So on the touch up, you will see me add a shirt and tie. You'll also see me do something slightly different. I'll go in there and I want to give the body a little bit more 3D appearance. And as I did that, it was it was it was nice, but I ended up saying to myself, I want to do something a little bit more. I want it to look as nasty as possible and really, really icky. So what I ended up doing was taking the drawing, that 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 one drawing layer of no, it was two layers. It was the head and the body, combining those, saving that layer, bringing that layer into a brand new palette by itself and then giving it a little bit of treatment to um, to basically make it, look, make it look a little bit more transparent, a little bit more yellow and green, and just very vibrant. And I adjusted the, um, the layers a little bit. I did some, 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 some funky Photoshop magic inside of Procreate. 
and I was very happy with the end product. And that is what I'm showing right now. The very end product of what I did. It did take a bunch of layers. It also took me moving the virus body out of that particular um, palette, bringing it to its own palette and just working on it by itself. Because again, I have not mastered mask. And because of that, that's the best and easiest, that's the most efficient way I can work on this particular thing without um, waste, basically spinning my wheels. So I've talked a lot about that. I hope you enjoyed um, what I've talked about. And I also hope that you enjoy one more time the reeling or viewing of the actual drawing itself. My name is Carlton. I hope you like and subscribe to this channel here because I will be bringing more stuff up because I still watch the news all the time. I still have ideas. So, oh, and I am for hire. Yes, I'll 1099 something anytime you want me to. I mean, I'll send it to my tax dude and everything. I don't have a business, but I'll 1099 that for you for sure. That's the end of this video. I hope you didn't um, get lost with me talking about 1099. So, but I can be for hire.